As for Gimli, Legolas, and Aragorn, they made such breakfast as they could, and in the growing light were ready once again to search the ground for signs of the hobbits. <coughs> Let's go up here, up this rock wall, and look about us. I still feel my breath short. <coughs> Hey. I'm almost sure the hobbits have been up here, too. But there are other marks, very strange marks, which I don't understand. And here we are, at the top. And nicely caught in the net, too. Look. Look at what? There, in the trees. Where? I don't have elf eyes. Hush! Speak more softly. Look. Down in the wood. Back in the way that we've just come. It's he. Can't you see him passing from tree to tree? I see. I see now. Look, Aragorn, didn't I warn you? There's the old man all in dirty gray rags. That's why I couldn't see him at first. Your bow, Legolas, bend it. I... Get ready. It's our room and don't let him speak of what has fell upon us. Suit first. But why are you waiting? What's the matter with you? Legolas is right. We may not shoot an old man so at unawares and unchallenged, whatever fear or doubt be on us. Watch and wait. At that moment, the old man quickened his pace and came with surprising speed to the foot of the rock wall. Then suddenly he looked up while they stood motionless, looking down. There was no sound. They couldn't see his face, he was hooded, and above the hood he wore a wide-brimmed hat so that all his features were overshadowed, except for the end of his nose and his gray beard. See the gleam of his eyes. Well met indeed, my friends. I wish to speak to you. Won't you come down, or shall I come up? I'll come up. Now, stop him, Legolas. Didn't I say I wish to speak to you? Put away that bow, master. <laughs> ah! Gimli's hand went at once to his axe haft. Aragorn drew his sword. The Golas picked up his bow. The old man took no notice, but stooped and sat himself on a low, flat stone. Then his grey cloak drew apart, and they saw beyond doubt that he was clothed beneath, all in white. Saruman, speak. Tell us where you've hidden our friends. Speak, or I'll make a dint in your hat that even a wizard will find it hard to deal with. The old man was too quick for him. He sprang to his feet and leaped to the top of a large rock. There he stood, grown suddenly tall, towering above them. His hood and his grey rags were flung away, his white garments shone. He lifted up his staff, and Gimli's axe leaped from his grasp and fell on the ground. <coughs> the sword of Aragorn, stiff in his motionless hand, blazed with sudden fire. <gasps> Legolas shot an arrow high into the air, and it vanished in a flash of flame. <laughs> ah! Mithrandir! Mithrandir! Well met, I say to you again, Legolas. They all gazed at him. His hair was white as snow in the sunshine, and gleaming white was his robe. The eyes under his deep brows were bright, piercing as the rays of the sun. Power was in his hand. Between wonder, joy, and fear, they stood and found no words to say for the moment. Gandalf. Beyond all hope, you return to us in our need. What veil was over my sight? Gandalf. Gandalf? Uh, yes, that was the name. I was Gandalf. Yes, yes, you may still call me Gandalf. Mm. Come, get up, my good Gimli. No blame to you and no harm done to me. Indeed, my friends, none of you has any weapon that could hurt me. Be merry. We meet again at the turn of the tide. The great storm is coming, but the tide has turned, Gimli. 
Oh, Gandalf. But you're all in white. Yes, I'm in white now. Indeed, I am Sir Uman, one might almost say. Sir Uman as he should have been. Uh, but come now, tell me of yourselves. Won't you first give us news of the hobbits? Did you find them? Are they safe? No, there was a darkness over the valleys, and I didn't know of their captivity until the eagle told me. The eagle? Yes. I've seen an eagle high and far off. The last time was three days ago. Yes, that was the wind lord who rescued me from all thank. His sight's keen, but he can't see all that passes under hill and tree. The ring now has passed beyond my help or the help of any of the company that set out from Rivendell. Very nearly it was revealed to the enemy, but it escaped. I had some part in that, for I sat in a high place and I strove with the dark tower, and the shadow passed. Then I was weary, very weary, and I walked long in dark thought. And you know about Frodo? Yes. yes. How do things go with him? Oh, I can't say he was... Saved from a great peril, but many lie before him still. He resolved, you know, to go alone to Mordor, and he set out. That's all I can say. Not alone. We think that Sam went with him. Oh, did he? Good, good, very good. You must tell me more. Now, now, sit, sit down here by me and tell me the tale of your journey. <laughs>